David. Wow. A man after God's own heart. Is my battery dying? A God. Thank God we have. Let me part with you. I'm not unfaithful, but okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, where am I again? Started with David. Many of, many of us will say, Oh, I like David. I want to be like David, defeating Goliath. Man, worshiper. Mm. Being called a man after God's own heart. Man. There was a dark side. There was a dark part in David's life. When he fell into adultery, connected with that, he also committed murder. Alam mo, itong kasalanan to, ano to eh, kabit-kabit ito. Wow, kabit ha. It's connected. It's the same. You know? I mean, if you invite one some other evil will come in too. You know? Because if you have two wives, the most logical next step is to steal. Because you cannot afford, you can even afford to have one wife now, two wives. Now, for David, he did not only commit adultery, but he committed murder. You know the story, right? Now, the, the stages in David's fall is first, destruction, second, attraction, third, transaction, fourth, destruction. De destruction. 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 Na distraction. He was supposed to be serving God in the in the battle. Where is he? On his palace. While the rest are serving God and should be on the battlefront, he's at home. So he's distracted with his focus. Second is attraction. He saw this beautiful girl on the rooftop bathing. In the world's view, that is opportunity. Now don't even say that, oh, it's because of that lady. If Bathsheba is not bathing on top of the roof of her house, nobody, bakit naman kasi yung panaliligo sa bubong? <laughs> Ay, yung palasyo ng hari mas mataas. Eh, di kita. Huh? Right? Now, there is an explanation with that because there's a Levitical law that once a woman is unclean, meaning she has her period, she cannot bathe herself inside the house. Because if she bathes herself inside the house, she's making the whole house unclean. So that's the reason why Bathsheba is somehow taking a bath on the rooftop. Ito na mga hari na dapat nasa labanan, ibang laban ng mga nakinato. Nasa terasa, alam niyo namang mas mataas yung palasyo niya. Hindi nakita si Bathsheba. After the attraction comes the transaction. Pare ko, sino ba yan? Kung may asawa ko, eh may asawa ko. Eh may asawa ko na ng buntis, may asawa ko na. Ano? So you know what happened? It comes the destruction. And with all of these incidents, it's David gives us a true perspective of really what happened in Psalm 51 verse 4. Oh, oh. How can you uh, put that up? Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. That you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. It's interesting to know that with his multiple sins that he had committed, adultery and murder and cheating and everything, those stuff, David said, Lord, 
I have sinned in you. I have, I have sinned in you and, and, and in you only. So adultery cannot, God cannot be out from that. As I have said, it is not your problem only with your spouse. You have a bigger problem. You have a problem with God. Adultery starts with the heart. Adultery starts with God. Okay? Next slide. Hope. It's getting very quiet now. Now, adultery destroys. It destroys the one doing it. It destroys the one ate the party to it. It destroys the kids, the children. It destroys the family. Who is a very basic institution of the society. And one can say, oh, I'm doing it for myself, so I, I'm not, hindi ko naman inisorbe ibang tao, blah, blah, blah. No, that's what you think. But that's, that again is a deception. Adultery brings suffering. How many families have been destroyed? How many kids and children's future and, and perspective and plans have been destroyed? How many kids' mentality, because they saw it, they witnessed it, and becomes one of it too after they married? It's a spirit. It's a deception. It cannot be from God. Amen? Right? Hello? Are you there? Amen. It cannot be from God. <laughs> How many stories have we read where naghiwala yung mag-asawa, nag-asawa uli yung babae, nag-asawa uli yung lalaki, only the kids oh. For, the, for one of the daughters or the sons to be molested by the other party just because of a stepdad or a stepmom's evil desires. How many kids who grew up in a broken family because of divorce and adultery and they're not Christians and they would say, oh, it's, all, it's just the norm. Let me do it. My dad did it. My mom did it. Why can't I do it? It distorts a righteous mentality and way of life. Adultery destroys. Destroys you. Destroys your relationship with your family, with your kids. Brings you suffering. brings you guilt and guilt is something that you cannot, it's hard to shake it off in exercise you just take a bath that's over, no, safeguard yung sabon na safeguard cannot clean your conscience matatanda lang ang makakaintindi kasi natin ako yung safeguard ano yun? pati kunsya, no even safeguard cannot clean your conscience you know, it's, 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 it's an evil. It's devilish. It's, it's, a, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a mirage. It's a deception. It's a trap. <coughs> it brings much suffering. Next slide. Oh, if you want to read Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, it says, it destroys you. Whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks, lacks understanding, and he who and he who does so destroys his own soul. But don't ever say it's not making any impact in your life. No, not only in your life, but a lot of people's lives around you being destroyed. Next slide after that, hope. Now. Let me give you some reasons why people commit adultery. Number one, because of one's loose attitude towards God. No holiness. No righteousness. No fear of God. So, it's okay. As what I have said, marriage, the official 
the officiating minister is really God. So if you're not respecting, honoring God, you'll not be respecting and or or, or uh, follow His command. Number two, people commit adultery because of one's loose attitude towards marriage. Here we go. Let me say this. And by saying this, I you know I love you so much. I'm not here to condemn, offend, I may, which I may at this time. But know my, my heart. Know my intention is not really to hurt, but to teach. So is it really, and I have hundreds since I served God in the ministry, hundreds of cases, especially in Singapore. In Singapore, I belong to kind of a conservative church that we, that my senior pastor, one of our church's policy is that we do not marry divorcees. You can be prayed for, we can pray for you, but uh, of the seven pastors that we have in Singapore, and it's a big church, uh, we cannot solemnize marriages with divorcees, only with singles. And that is the church's policy. Yeah. I will throw you some of the school of thoughts. So I will throw you some of the uh, school of thoughts with with the churches. And, and now, may nagsasabi last time, okay? Again, in, in my previous church, they said, oh, um, Pastor, is my question. I got married to, to this person because I was pregnant. In the Philippines, if you got your girlfriend pregnant, man, you should. Do I used to get married? Right? Now, now that's our culture. Last time I checked. Diba? The word in Tagalog is panagutan mo yan. Diba? Huwag mong ipahiya ang lahi namin. Dahil nabuntis. Bakit nabuntis? Well, uh, parehong kabataan, parehong teenager, nabuntis lang. Nab hindi nabuntis. I'm sorry. Nabuntis. So dapat pakasal lang kasi dapat panagutan. That is one of our Filipino culture. Wag mo na number two. Number two mo na. So, pinakasalan. Hindi naman makasunto. They barely know each other. They, they barely love each other. Init lang ng katawan. Ayan ang mga things. Okay. Uh, personally, I believe that the... Uh, I personally believe that the main ingredient towards marriage is love. You will marry someone because you love him or you love her. Hello? Right? Huh? You take love for marriage, marriage is not. So, but again, we have that culture in the Philippines. Kapag nabuntis ka, dapat makasalan. So, Pastor, ay nung kinasal kami, halos hindi kami magkakilala, hindi kami nagkasundo. I'm not, ito pa. I'm not a Christian yet. Hello? Diba? So, may huwala. Eh, naging Christian. Akala na maghiwala. And again, Christian. And then she or he met a wonderful Christian lady, Christian man, and they love each other. So is it adultery? That's for you to discuss in your home group. And don't call me again. <laughs> Now, there was a thought, there was a Christian church's policy last time that, oh, it happened, anyway, it happened when you're not yet a Christian. Now, that is kind of a dangerous uh, teaching, because it will be this. Okay, um, is marriage, when you're not Christians, not valid? Hello? You are? Eh, ang excuse kasi is, 
Eh, hindi pa kami Christian ng pastor. Eh, nasa darkness pa kami. Tsaka ang nagkasa sa amin, pare, hindi naman yung tumulong ng Diyos. Hello? Tatay Larry, you don't have any chance anymore. Diba? Right? You know? So if we use that as an excuse, again, if you put a blanket, put a blanket, blanket na lahat. So ibig sabihin ba, lahat ng kasal before na kind born again, eh, is that bad? Because that's the argument. Oh, Pastor, we got married? Because, again, we were fixed, we were arranged by our parents. You ask me why, how, how, paano yung pastor yung mga ganyang instances? It's very hard to answer. I would say, talk to me longer, then I would really give you uh, something. Pero it's hard to have a blanket policy that, okay, all weddings before you are born again are null and void. Oh my goodness, I'm opening up a can of worms. <laughs> Di ba? Yeah. Right? Ay, magkasala na lahat ngayon. Magkaroon na tayo na renewal. I-renew na yan bago makakawala. Because another argument with that is, I thought local governments are ordained by God according to Romans 13, 1 and 2. Right? And again, culture, iba-iba factor. We, we, we should factor the culture. Iba-iba ang kultura, iba-iba ang bansa. Uh, here's my answer. And it's a, it is a very fast, easy excuse. Baka <laughs> gamitin <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's really tough. Sige nga, kayo nga sa magot niya. Diba? Kinasal sila pin Ager. When they got married, they hardly know each other. They really don't really know it. They don't really know much more love each other. Now they're all grown up, more matured. Now they're Christians. Now they have a boyfriend, girlfriend who is a Christian. They want to get married. But let's go to America. Divorce is legal. Because we cannot divorce in the Philippines, so let's go to America. That's why some people get married. When they're in the Philippines, they get married in Hong Kong. Not because the food there is nice. Because they allow divorce there too. So you see, you can play with the, you can play around with the local laws. But can we run away from God? That's the question. Diba? Hello? So, Pastor, ano talaga ang sagwa? And afterwards, you know, this Christian man and woman, they got married, although one or both were married before they got married. And they love the Lord. They have a, 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 they have, they have a model family. They are raising up their kids. The Christian man. Now, would you say that that's evil? Would you say that that is the plan of God? It's very difficult. Okay, let's close in prayer. Father, <laughs> will the end justify the means? Sabayan. Lalo kung pinapahirap ang ser mo. Will the end justify the means? Well, look at the look at the product now, Pastor. It's gone. So would you say it's evil? Well, it started wrongly, Pastor. Can we correct it? Can't we have the freedom to correct a committed error when you were still innocent and ignorant of it? Hindi mo pwedeng i-correct, Pastor, ang isang pagkakamali. Dahil pa nagkamali, just because ganyan ang batas, dapat talagang sunog, sumunod. Kasi nga, yan ang batas. 
Let me give you an instance. This, this happened in a church that I pastored many, many, many years ago. So, there's a couple in the church. They've been living together. They love each other so much. Then they become a Christian. <clears throat> then, oh, oh no, no, excuse me. This happened after I left the church. So the man was advised to leave the woman that he is living with and go back to his old wife. So the lady was uh, abandoned alone while the man went back to his old wife who it didn't really work. He attempted it didn't really work and both of them backslided. They would say, oh, we don't want to attend a Christian church anymore because the church don't want to accept us. How would you say, how would you, what's your word about that? What's your opinion on that? Diba? Especially in the Philippines, because once you're married, you cannot really marry. Legally. Unless you know the city registrar, where you can pull out your record. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Ano ang ang sagot pastor? You know? Ay, hindi mapakalit. You know, my, my uh, opinion is very broad. But it is a safety net. Malawakan itong aking comment. And my comment will go to, is it, ano nga yung tinuro ko dati, nasa kablang meeting pa tayo? Sa tao Ha? Yung kumapit yung salvation mo, hindi? Ah, it was. Yun! Let me go to this very broad excuse. <laughs> Is it essential or non-essential? Now, <laughs> what do I mean by essential? It will affect your salvation. Non-essential. It will not affect your salvation. Would you think that doing that will affect your salvation? Now I bring to you the question. Now you be the one to answer. Right? Because it's tough. Believe me, I don't have the answer. We don't have the answer. Because, because if I answer you, go to some other churches which answer is not my answer. Or go to other countries which answer is not the pastor's answer in that country. Diba? So you're playing around rules and local laws and policies. Right? Lalo pa lumalabo, mga But, thank you for your honesty. But, but again, but again, uh, I would like to say that is it essential or non-essential? Because again, let me remind you, this topic is not to condemn, judge, Anyway, just to open up our eyes. You know? And thank God. I know I will even face God and be accountable to everything that I teach in this church. And thank God that judgment with God are all personal. That we will face God and give an account to God for ourselves. Right? Amen? Amen. Not for not for some other people. But for us, I mismo ang sa sarili na. And thank God. Hallelujah. 
for Christians. You know our Christians in the house, lift up your hand. I think I see, I see five, six. And for Christians, hallelujah, when we, when we face God on the judgment day, inawag ang pangalan niyo, huh? Alex Chua. Sabi ni St. Peter Lord, millions of Alex Chua. Alex Joa will stand before God to give an account for his life. There will be someone who will step in and say, Father, I'm his attorney. Yeah. I paid his salvation with my precious blood. Here is the payment for all his sins and shortcomings. The Father will say, I accept the offer. Alex is saved. Aren't you glad? Yes, we may be guilty, and we are all, aren't we? Who are not? Well, thank God that when we face God on that blessed day, we are saved not because of what we have done, nor we are condemned because of what we have done. We are saved not by the things that we have done, but by what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Amen. Right? I think I saved myself. This <laughs> now, why do people come in the doctrine number three? <laughs> because my goodness we're living in this world where there is a perverted immoral sex oriented society oh my goodness right you you open the television everywhere what is the most popular addiction in the world at least in an urban society not rural what is the first addiction in the rural and urban society? Sugar. <laughs> you? Come on, you already know it. Phone addiction. Smartphone addiction, number one. Yesterday we had breakfast, thank God, with the family. We collected our phones and put it on the side. Own addictions. You know what's the second? Pornography. Second addiction. We're living in a society, we're living in a world where sex has been perverted, immorality has been perfected, and it's the norm. We live in a society where <coughs> Cheating is normal. It's a new normal now. It's a new thing. There was a website hacked. I think it was last year, two years ago. And that website is a website that promotes adultery. Right? Ashley Madison. Imagine Ashley. Ashley Madison. You know what this is this uh, website? They're not promoting it. The members are married couples who want to have sex with other married couples. Now, I don't know and who is it who hacked into this website and this hacker broadcast the list of the members of this website. And you know who are on the list? Married couple, married people. Politicians, huh? managers, owners of companies, pastors. I read it in the news that there's one pastor who resigned from the church just because his name was the. I checked the list. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank God. 
the name of Alex Jones.